I'm Eric Falcon. I'm here at uh, Max Axe. And um, uh, today I'm demonstrating the uh, Max Axe FJ3 model, which is one of our prestige series mouthpieces. Uh, the main concept with this mouthpiece is to have uh, total harmonic balance, and it's one of the more interesting models that we have in terms of that. Uh, what we mean by harmonic balance is that the e EQ on the mouthpiece is flat. The top, the middle, and the bottom frequencies are in complete balance, so it allows you a neutral palette that you can shape. So it gives you the uh, biggest range of versatility in terms of what kind of music you're playing, what kind of gig you're doing, and it helps you personalize your sound in that way. And uh, you know, your read choice, your to get your choice, your horn, all that kind of stuff will really influence the end result. So um, I'll play a little bit more and talk about a uh, some of the more specific features of it. <laughs> So one of the biggest things that we did on the FJ3 is uh, we extended the window size and opened up a different kind of chamber shape. So a lot of guys will look at that mouthpiece uh, just from the pictures and they'll say, wow, it's going to be really bright. Look at that baffle. And actually what we did is, um, and I'll just, you know, crudely show it this way. You'll check out the pictures on uh, maxax.com for more details. But you can see, you know, where the reed is and how much of the reed is exposed to the air column. And that actually allows, uh, I'll show that a little more carefully. So you can see how much of the reed is exposed to the air column. Uh, one of the biggest things that that does is it allows the reed to produce a lower node and it helps the mouthpiece generate that lower node. So when that's kind of built into your sound, you have an immediate thickness to your sound that carries out through all your dynamic levels. And that's one of the more interesting things that we were able to achieve with this mouthpiece design. Is that uh, unlike a lot of classic mouthpieces that are in like the link vein or, or the more large chamber, uh, or very small chambered high baffle design is when we're playing softer we don't lose a lot of the character so when we're subtoning you know you still have a lot of width to the sound a lot of depth to the sound and when we're playing louder that doesn't just start to distort so you have a little bit more consistency in the timbre at your uh, various dynamic levels and everywhere in between the two that I just demonstrated uh, you know, one of the other benefits that we had with the FJ3 is uh, by opening up the window uh, wider than traditional is also that we all are activating more of the read and by activating more of the read we're actually making it more efficient so there's lower back pressure. There's not zero back pressure because when you play a mouthpiece that's zero back pressure you can't really affect the pitch and what happens then is that you end up playing sharper in the upper register uh, and you end up playing flat in the bottom because that's what the natural tendency of the saxophone is unfortunately. So your overtones are going to line up a little bit nicer by having just a hair resistance in there, but it's still on the extreme side of efficiency uh, while not having zero. And the other thing that that allows you to do is stretch both ends of your dynamic range. So as opposed to playing uh, at a, a 1 to 10 scale, you're playing through a 1 to 20 scale. And you know, your 1 is, is very soft. And then your loud is extremely loud. <laughs> So you're getting a lot more in there. That helps you do everything from pit orchestra work, where you're always uh, trying to blend, and you know you have your microphone right on top of you, and you're trying to make sure that your timbre and your pitch is locked in, or in a recording situation with the section. And then when you're on an your R&B gig or you know wedding gig, uh, top 40 gig, stuff like that, to where uh, you know you're you're trying to compete with percussion, uh, amplified stuff, electric guitars, all that kind of thing. Just like all of our Max Hacks mount pieces, uh, we start with a solid bar material, so we uh, you know, buy high grade brass, and it's uh, turned on a CNC lathe, then it's uh, put into a five axis mill and the machining's done. After that's done, the final voicing of the mount piece, the facing, the tip rail profile, uh, and the final baffle profiles are all sculpted by hand. And uh, the nice thing about uh, buying a Max Hacks mount piece is that you have the consistency of uh, an individual craftsman or a craftsman that's been trained by uh, that same craftsman to do things that same way. So in this instance, you're getting a mouthpiece finished either by myself personally, which is most of the time, or uh, by my assistant Spencer Broadhead, and he's been trained by me to do things my way every every time. And every mouthpiece goes through my hands at some point for either a final tweak, inspection, or in, uh, play testing. So you'll get an extreme amount of efficiency, a high level of efficiency, you get a high level of consistency, and you get a, a wide range of uh, different styles out of this mouthpiece. So again, this is our FJ3. Um, it's, it's in our prestige collection and you can buy it on maxhacks.com.